Hey, it's Valerie Ling here coming to you from a very warm, let's see, 31 degrees. Oh, well, maybe not that warm, but yesterday was incredibly hot. I want to just bring to you the word help. What comes to your mind when you hear that word? What comes to your mind when you think about asking for help? That's the bigger issue. For many of us, we are likely to have low help-seeking behavior, meaning for reasons unique to us, but also very common to others, because we're embarrassed, before, because we feel guilty, because we think we should push through, we shouldn't ask for help, maybe because for us it's a sign of weakness, we don't seek help when we need it. And if we actually look at the way the word help is used these days, I think it actually detracts from the original meaning and the origins of the word help. We call our children little helpers, meaning that we give them tasks that we could really do, but just to make them feel better and build up their sense of um, who they are, we give them these little tasks and say, thank you for being my little helper. And I think that concept um, flows through then to how we view asking others for help. Like, like it's beneath them. Like we really shouldn't ask for help because we can do those things ourselves. I want to suggest to you, however, that the word help doesn't really have those origins and those meanings. Help is really about being able to reach out to somebody who is perhaps more skilled, who perhaps have strengths that are greater than yours in certain areas, and who are actually extenders and advocates of what you are doing and are able to come into the picture and increase uh, the capacity for what you do, right? So for example, if you are somebody who is uh, passionate and uh, pretty driven to serve in the mental health field, and your thing is being able to sit down with someone for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, really listen into their story, see what they are experiencing, empathize with that and work with them to get out of that, your strength may not be in doing uh, filing or um, making sure that invoices are paid on time or sending out receipts and things like that. And if we look for an extender, so here's my suggestion, replace help or helper with extender. If we look for an extender, who can actually extend the reach and extend the uh, capacity of what we are doing or what I am doing by taking on these activities? Who can extend? The other way to look at it is who can advocate? Who can actually really catch on to the things that are going on in this world, in this space that I'm in, and really um, advocate for the things that are important? And perhaps it gives them joy because they feel like they're part of something bigger. So for example, uh, if you are someone who uh, really believes in family time, right? That's your value. And what's tripping you up is you may not have the mindset or the headspace or for whatever reason to always do the cleaning, to always do the laundry, to always do the groceries and to always do whatever. That could be someone who shares that value and actually has the capacity to come in and advocate for that by helping. So if we actually swap over our thinking from being, I only ask for help when I am weak, or people are going to be offended that I've asked them for help, or people are going to feel burdened that I've asked them for help too, people are going to feel energized and motivated and so honored to be a part of what we are doing and to extend and actually replicate an advocate for what we are doing and that it gives other people an opportunity to come in and be part of that picture to serve, to replicate, to um, authenticate, <laughs> all of those words, 
uh, we might actually get out of that headspace of seeing it as uh, a sign of weakness and activities that demean others. All right, happy Sunday.